Hello and welcome back to another snapshot video. In this snapshot, changes have been made that directly relate to an announcement from Mojang about the update being split into two updates. The first update is coming this summer and the second update will release around the end of this year. We will know more details about the timing and what's coming in each update in the coming weeks. Even though some features will be released later than planned, we can still try them out through a separate data pack. Let's first go over the Caves and Cliffs world generation changes impacted by the changes with the recent announcement. World height has been switched back to the 1.16 levels. Noise caves and aquifiers have been switched off. Cave and ravine caverns have been returned to their old settings. Crack caverns have been switched off. Ore spawning has been returned to 1.16 setup. Copper now generates between the bottom of the world and height 192, being most common around height 96. Tuff now generates in blobs between heights 0 and 16. Worlds created in Snapshot 21W05B or any earlier version can now once again be opened, and worlds created in any version between Snapshot 21W06. A and 21W14A can no longer be opened. So it isn't all bad. You can still actually try out what will come in the later update with a data pack and an experimental custom world. So it's not all too bad. We do actually end up getting a prototype data pack for the Caves and Cliffs update, which will enable all the features that have been turned off. But do keep in mind that the world you create with this data pack will be flagged as experimental by the game, and such worlds are not guaranteed to work in future versions. And it's also noted that you can't add data packs that change the world generation to existing worlds, so you must create a new world to access the experimental features. But if we go ahead and actually create a custom world world here and go into data packs, caves and cliffs worlds preview. This will be a custom world generation. So if we do open this up, it will tell you that this world is using experimental settings and it's not supported. All right, so we have the world loaded with the data pack. And if we go down here, you can definitely tell that this is generated with the experimental features. Here we are, we are inside a normal 21W15A world with the changes reverted and it's actually quite a nice spawn and I do have to admit as much as I don't want to that it is a lot more smooth. All right we are in spectator mode in a normal world now so let's actually take a look at the generation. So yeah it it definitely looks a lot like 1.16 generation but I mean I don't know what this is. That's strange. I don't feel like that's right. So yeah, it is very much the same, but there are still changes like with the mine shafts and you know, we still do end up getting a few things that we had in the past. And we definitely have axolotls, so that is pretty great. These guys are cute. But yeah, as you can probably see with a lot of things, we do get some of the features. It's just like a very compact version of the Caves and Cliffs update. All right, well, that is um, basically it for that part of the video. So let's actually get fully into the new features and changes of this snapshot. Let's first go over the new feature of 21W15A. Goats will ram anything that moves and also armor stands as well. And now for the changes in 21W15A. A crinkly, crunchy sound now plays when bone meal is used. Some blocks have been reordered in the creative inventory. Goats will now avoid walking on powdered snow. The main menu background has been updated to reflect the caves and cliffs update. The textures of the roar ore items have been tweaked. Just like other ore materials, you can craft a compact version of the roar ore items in order to save inventory space. Definitely some interesting blocks. I actually like them, especially the gold. It's like a new type of glowstone almost. 
And now for the technical changes in 21w15a, added the marker entity, added the debug function selector and nbt chat components, can now be configured separately between elements. Servers can now create a custom message to display when prompting players about custom source packs. Markers are a new type of entity meant for custom use cases like map making and data packs. They only exist server side and are never sent to clients. But yes, other than bug fixes, there is no other changes for this snapshot. So yeah, this was definitely a first of its kind snapshot. But yeah, that is, uh, that is basically it for this snapshot video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and turn on notifications to keep updated on new snapshots and Minecraft news. But yes, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.